At some point in the early hours of Tuesday, the 29th of July, 1986, Lee Baker's volcanic rage, this lava of resentment that had flooded over him as he'd taken Alida Good's life and then Clive Batu's and attempted to take Helen Longhurst's, began to abate. Something changed. Often when individuals go into this kind of mode of, of being the killing machine that could never stop and, you know, that evades the police, etc., there is often no particular end point. They often do take their own lives because they can't see any future for them where they remain in control of everything that's happening. At the point when they're apprehended, they're in other people's control. And Baker's constitution, as it were, would not accept that. He had to remain in control. So there may have been a plan to kill himself, therefore maintaining control to the end. He could easily have carried on and, and the casualty number would have been far greater, but something um, came into his head. Reality kicked in and he realised that he'd gone too far. We're now in the morning of the 29th of July and a local police officer who happened to know Good and Baker encounters him. He was arrested by a single uniform officer. He had taken a call to attend a, a burglary in a house um, and as he attended he parked his car by a, um, the side of the road and Baker said, I'm Lee Baker, I think you're looking for me. So he was arrested, he gave no trouble and he was taken to Bournemouth police station where he was uh, uh, put in custody. When he was arrested, he was cool, calm and collected. He was almost emotionless. Um, he wasn't unpleasant. Um, he was amenable, but there was nothing, no emotion there at all. Was that a sign? that Lee Baker was tired out, that he'd exhausted his own supply of adrenaline and emotion? Or was he beginning, perhaps, to feel a little touch of remorse? By the time the police officer came across and spotted Baker, his temper tantrum have subsided. The, the levels of adrenaline in his body that had kept driving him on um, to do greater and greater bad, um, he, he was now, as it were, exhausted. And that adrenaline had dropped. So that kind of suddenly having a purpose in life had kind of diminished to, yeah, just want this over with. I can't really be bothered doing anything else. The whole purpose of this was to terrify and to destroy his, his, his former girlfriend. To kill her mother, to kill her dog, to try and kill her friend, her best friend, was purely aimed at her. He didn't try and kill her, interestingly, when he stopped on the, on the bike. He told her what he'd done and, 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 and continued to cause her harm. He wanted her alive, but he wanted her to suffer. The fact that Lee Baker had committed four acts of murder or close to in the space of one night is remarkable enough, but that it took place in as respectable and upright a town as Bournemouth on the south coast of England is all the more remarkable because Bournemouth is not known for its violence or indeed anything except an elderly population who go there to enjoy the benefits of the seaside. It was utterly out of character for the town. But Dorset police needed to uncover whether Baker's actions were random acts of insanity or the calculated violence of a ruthless killer. <laughs> 